Hi Floss Tube. This is Nicole and my channel is Nikki Stitchy and I am back with y'all for a um, July yeah July update and I think this one is Floss Tube number eight. Um, I, hope, I hope I'm right but let's see. I am coming back with you for some updates and I think I'm going to do um, a whip parade because I went through all my projects and um, I've UFO'd some and focused on the ones that I actually want to work on. So we'll get into that. And then I'll have some updates for you. We uh, have a um, had a wedding that we attended that was fun in Ohio my daughter that's 20 years old and I could tell you a little bit about that okay so guess what my big focus piece was the Grand Library and for the majority of July I did not work on this well since last time I talked to you I was at 50% and since then I haven't really worked on much but I have I'll show you what I worked on and I haven't moved the Q snap but I did uh, work on this piece right here and this is my little pointer that I found at Hobby Lobby in the classroom section so I worked on um, this guy, and now what I've, I think I'm at 51%, and um, I think I want to keep on continuing to work on this part. I'm going down by the least color to the most, completing that by color within this section. There is my grand library on a Q-snap. And these are like, I haven't touched the other parts, but you can get a, a gist of it. I have a, the actual picture of what I've done on Instagram, if you follow me there. The grand library, this is on 25 count um, Easy Grid, Lugana. And I've been, I don't know if you can see because of glare. Been writing when I started. So I started this one in May 2022 and I am at 51 and some change. And that. I don't feel, um, I don't know when I'm going to get this done. I was hoping I could complete it by the end of this year, but that was before I took a whole, basically, almost two months not really working on it but it's still probably still my focus piece so what I did is I went through all my um, whips that I had before and because I have different preferences now I like to stitch on um, 25 count one over one full cross for different designs other than um, full coverages. I only do those for 10 stench, two over one on 25 count. That is my go-to. But I've noticed like some of the ones that I did start before, I'm going to restart or have restarted, but I like them tiny. I don't know why. I like working on tiny things even though I can't see nothing. Um, I'm actually thinking about getting some craft optics, but if y'all see how many things I have tried to buy to magnify what I see in needlework, it's really crazy. Um, it looks like, like a science room with all the magnifications that I have in, in my room. I've, um, but, oh, so needle bug 
love Karen. She, I think she's going to do a review on these craft optics um, that are really good. I think they're like dental um, magnifiers that go on glasses. So I'm kind of interested to see her review on that. So can't wait for that one. All right. The next one I've been doing, working on, is my God Shed His Grace on Thee. And it's looking pretty good. I first did the outline of it all. Um, well, kind of. I didn't finish over here. But then I decided to go back and do the diagonal. So that's been fun. And I've been doing the diagonal in um, 20 rows. And just trying to fill in. Like I won't stitch over um, or under unless the top is already filled. So I've been doing that and been leaving um, the thread for the next row. I tried to do 10 by 10, but it just, I felt like it was just too much thread change and thread pieces hanging off. And I, this is manageable for me, but I think anything more than that, I, like I tried the, um, the row, what, what is it called? Royal Rose, sorry. And um, I felt that it was just a little too bulky on the pieces, but this one is the same, 25 count, and this is my back, 25 count um, easy grid, two over one, 10 stitch. And I'm doing it on a diagonal with parking. So I've been liking how this one is turning out. And I've been putting more stitches in this one. Oh, where am I at on that? I think I just hit 10%. But let me check for you. And I guess I need to show you pictures of what it looked like. So for God Shed His Grace on these, I'm at 10.01% with um, 20,000, about 20,000 stitches. And it's a 200,000 stitch count. And the picture is, and we're doing this with a couple of ladies. That's how it'll look. And I think I finally got to, let me get my pointer, um, that part at the top of the tree. So that's nice. Still a lot of sky left. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep going. Um, so my next diagonal will be going to here. And I could probably do that one, but after probably the next, the diagonal after that, I might have to move the Q-snap, so I might just stop. I was thinking of stopping somewhere here, but then I won't be doing anything but sky, so I don't know, that don't sound too fun. Maybe I'll just move the Q-snaps. But this Q-snap is pretty hard to um, change because it's really tight. Um, the one that I use for my the Grand Library is pretty loose, so I can always um, just pop it off and pop it on and it's easy to uh, ex like move around but like these new ones it's so hard because they're new I think I prefer them loose because I can make them tighter if I wanted to by adding felt or fabric but it being so new it's kind of hard to um, move around and I like moving around I don't like being confined or not have that freedom of moving around as easily. Um, here is another full coverage, and this one is called The Shire Painting. And let me show you a picture. This is my Kindle. This one is at... 0.59% and the 
picture. I got it off of Etsy. And I'm doing it with a couple of ladies. Um, I don't want to leave anyone out, but I know um, Leanne is doing it from Hometown Stitching. Oh, no. I'll have her information below. Um, and Alicia from Adventures in Stitching. But this is what that one will look like. Completed. So it's called a Shire Painting, and you can find that on Etsy. Okay, and so I, I'm starting to establish the diagonal, so I have to go down, and again, 20 by 20, and this one is on 18 count, and I'm doing full cross, two over one. That's my progress on that. Um, the fabric is pretty stiff and I'm not sure how I like my stitches on the 18 count yet. I have not made a, found a complete opinion for that one yet. Let's see. And my next one is I want to get the name right because I'm always messing up the name for this one. But this one is called A Church for All Seasons. And it's by Chart and Creations. Uh, artwork, Mickey Bomi. I hope I'm saying it right. But it's a very narrow, long, narrow piece. And that's what that will look like. I am let's see. I am about two thousand three hundred stitches in almost at one percent. And again, so this is a very long but um not well it's wide but not as long. And I'm at the sky and um, I try to go down all the way and I must have did something there. I think that's the bottom actually. Yeah, that is the bottom part of it. Maybe. Hmm. I'm not sure. Um, so I went back on doing the diagonal at two over one tenth stitch for this. Do you like my wedding nails? I'm ready to change them out, but I wanted to show it off still. So that's a church for all seasons. And now I have, so I keep, I wanna show you, I keep all my whips basically on here, but um, in this, I think it's the Ikea cube under my desk. And then I put, the ones that are already in Q-snaps, like their own designated Q-snaps, I just put that on top. So what I've done for the past couple of days after I found all my whips that I actually do want to work on, um, and uh, that I have restarted or plan to restart, so they're in here, in basically the Amazon bag, because the only, um, what are these called? Project bag that I bought was from Dot Dot Goose. And I don't know. I found it that I'd rather spend the money on kidding up things right now instead of project bags. I mean, I could sew my own, but yeah, it's too much work. <laughs> I'd rather stitch. Sometimes I outweigh um, do I want to do this or do I want to stitch? And most likely it's, I want to stitch. So I will stitch. Okay, let me go through what I've been working on and then my whips that I have yet to work on recently. 
So I've been working on the bookshelf. This is by Little House Needlework and it's on linen, so why it's so wrinkly. But let me show you what it'll look like when it's done. Little House Needleworks, the bookshelf. And I was gonna give that to a friend. Um, so before, I'm not going to have before pictures because I don't even know where all those are. Um, but I know I didn't have this part and this part and I finished some of the leaves here and I'm about to go to the other books, but I've been doing this with the sewing method in hand and I've been enjoying that. I kind of figured out how to, um, how I like to stitch. Cause before it was just too much, um, too much thinking. And now I, I think I figured out how to do it. And I've been liking it a lot, especially, oh, because these are, this one is um, 28 count, um, two over two. And yeah, now like before I didn't like doing it, the, I think it took just too much time doing a stick and stab method. Um, but now that I'm doing the sewing method and my stitches don't look bad, I don't think. That's all with the sewing method on linen. I've been enjoying it. 28 count. And I started that last year I didn't write it down. Oh, October 25th. Yep. And that one is on 28 count light mocha, mocha cashew linen. On a 13 by 18. And I have some of my threads on a little Lorraine project card. Oh, I like these. I think I like the paper ones better than the plastic ones. Oh, and for some of my um, projects that I use, my big um, file drop, uh, what do you call it? Floss. Um, that I have the whole like master set. I made this to keep like. Um, the smaller the smaller ones in and I just use my needle to puncture through and it stays and I write down the what the number is and refer this one is for my um, the Shire painting all right I worked on that one recently. And, okay, so I put all my whips into a wheel. And um, I've been just hitting the wheel. I'll show you which one that I use. It's called Spin the Wheel. And I have all my um, whips on there. And I just spin it and work on it. And I've been working like since I started using it, all the Christmas ones have came up, um, and I'm, it's Christmas in July, and I wasn't intending to stitch Christmas in July, but it's funny how the next three projects that I have are Christmas happen to be pulled up on my app. Oh, that's okay. At least I touched it some. I didn't really want to work on it, so I think. Um, like for this one, it's the Royal Holiday by Mirabilia. I think I put one length of thread in. And it must be pretty old. I'm not sure when I started this one, but it was whenever I decided to tape the edges with scotch tape. So that and I think my length of thread was to fill in 
this part right here which was already like a half stitch and I tried to do the sewing method on that also but I'm not sure this fabric feels like um, a Lugana and it's a little stiff I don't know if it's stiff because it's old and I have decided to um, convert her skin color and um, to a darker color and probably her hair to a, a darker color too and I think because I have queens that I um in her line and I think I'm gonna make them all like different colored and what they're charted for with this skin conversion so I only put a thread of fabric in this one um, I don't know I'm almost so tempted to restart this one too guys oh me and all my restarts but ever since I finished my queen mermaid I haven't been really wanting to work on uh, Mirabilia especially if it has beads yep I don't think I like beading so the next Christmas one that came up on my wheel was um, um, a Carolyn Manning and I wonder if I I don't think I have the actual okay I'll find it on my phone it's called um, Carolyn Manning Holiday Joy. I don't think the name picture. I got a PDF because if you go to her website, she has all her patterns. I think all her patterns um, that you could download uh, right there. And you know, we like our instant. So, oh, sorry. It's it's called Jane's Joy Holiday Joy. And um, it's by Caroline Manning Designs, and it looks like that. And I decided to do it on, I think I got this fabric from Hobby Lobby, but initially I had first started uh, on white, but then I noticed there was a lot of white thread, so it wouldn't have shown up. So I decided to do the brown. And the only thing, so I had all of this done before and haven't touched it since this past week um, I did this block and I think that's Rudolph um, there's a lot of French knots in this and back stitching and I think I'm gonna save that to the end and this is like the repeating pattern throughout so I want to complete some because you're gonna get tired of doing all of these right if you save that for last but definitely the um, French knots and the backstitch I will save for last. But it kind of reminds me of like a quilt. So I did one block of that. I'm trying not to make a mess. And where's my other one? Okay. So the last Christmas one that got pulled for, I want to say Christmas in July that I didn't volunteer for, but my will made me do it. It didn't make me do it. I mean, I didn't have to, but I'm like, I could at least just put like one thread in there, right? So um, this one got called Partridge in a Pear Tree by Nora Corbett. And my plan is to do all 12 of these and I'm slowly collecting the patterns and and the tools. And it's not, it's not big at all. So I don't think the beading will drive me that crazy, but I did, um, I had to um, frog some of this green because I started it on the wrong way that I normally start a cross stitch. So I went back and did that and then I think I did this in hand or sewing method for the rest of the tree. And I put it away. At least I put something in it, right? 
that one is on the called for um, 28 count China, China pearl linen. No, that's not linen. I think it's, um, I know it's like a Joblin, but can you even tell what that is on? I don't know what color that is. Let me see. I usually try to save the, yep, the stickers. Like if I get it from one, two, three stitch. But um, that one is on oh, 28 count China Pearl Joblin Even Weave. And it's only 13 by 18 fabric, so. Um, yeah, that would be a quick finish. I probably will get to those closer to the holidays we get two. All right, I have a new start. Sorry, oh, this shirt and I, um, uh, I started the Spring Seasons of the Heart by uh, Brenda Gervais. Is this Brenda Gervais? Oh yeah, uh, with thy needle and thread. And I am using the Call for Colors, which is a lot of um, weeks, dye works, and what are those? Gentle Arts and Classic Color Works. And um, yeah, so I bought it. I bought all the thread that I would need for each project. So you have autumn, winter, spring, and summer. And I decided to do it on 25 count, one over one. I like the coverage of it and I like it to be teeny tiny. And that is my start. I think that's part of the roof, top roof. And yep, and this is on um, vintage country mocha where it's printed like um, I forgot what they call it. It's printed like that, but on the back it's not printed. So I will be able to fit like all four on probably half of this piece. It's an 18 by 27. And I started that on 6th of July. So I like writing um, the dates on the selvage part and I, I usually do it with a regular um, ballpoint. Sometimes I use the friction ones, but yeah. This one is my Summer Quaker by Lila Rose Studio. And I like to print in black and white because I don't know, I have a color printer and I have yet to use it, but um, I like to see the colors come up on the fabrics and be surprised. Um, and I don't even really like looking at what it looks like because I just like how it appears and see that oh that is a crab or you know whatever that's in the actual so I did this one on I wrote it too I started April 5th 2023 and this is a 40 count piece of fabric that uh, Brandy from be Stitch Me's club, monthly club that I'm a part of. And this one is called Ledger. And it's kind of a bluish, yellowish, um, like splotches or oh, I forgot what you'll call them. Yeah, I don't remember. That's how far I got. And I did end up messing up a little bit on this one, but it it's fine. It's not a big deal because I... Somewhere here I got off by one fabric stitch. 
Um, but I'm doing this one, two over one. No, one over two on 40 count. So one thread over two threads and yep. And it probably will go to here, I'm thinking. And so I'll have like the rest of the fabric for something else. That's I really like the crabs in the middle. You see them? All right, that's my summer Quaker 40 count. And I'm doing that one in a Q snap or a hoop. So while we're traveling to Ohio and we're in Arizona, um, so a lot of layovers and and driving to where we need to be, um, I brought two projects with me and one of them was my Temperature Quaker by um, Stitching Mommy. So Sarah from Stitching Mommy. Oh. I worked on that one, um, but... <laughs> The other one that I brought, I forgot to put the fabric into the bag. So that was pretty sad, but I'll show you that one too. So I brought this one. It was basically the only one that I could work on in the airport. And it's um, let's see. the PDF. So Stitching Mommy's um, Temperature Quaker. I finished the top portion. So I finished January, February, March, and now I'm working on April. And what's funny about this one is that I asked her for um, like custom temperatures and we've been hitting 100 degree weather here in the high desert and normally we don't um, so this year is kind of funny so I think when I get to that part it's all going to be the same color so hmm. we'll see but this one is on the Ada um, I think it's raw oatmeal that I got from Hobby Lobby and it's a 14 count and I'm doing it in hand um, sewing method. So that's been fun doing. It's a nice travel piece to take. Right. Yep. Next is a, I think I showed you last time, but I'm not sure what I showed last time, but um, it's by Al Forrest. And it's the Treasure Island Stitch Along, which is free. You can just go on their website and download it. Like many other charts that they have, that's free. But each part is like coming out. So I started this one on the end of May. And I am doing it in hand, so that's why I have it rolled up. But I waited until um, the top left portion because they started in the middle. And this is my preferred start. So I waited till that one came out. And now I took it all the way across to see if I was going to make it. And this is how much I have left over. So that's really a little tight, but it fits and I don't have to start over. So I think they released more parts and I mean, come on, I'm not gonna be able to keep up on a stitch along. I know this. I just, I guess it's more of a start along and that's fine, but I keep it rolled up, but then I chop it so I could stick it in here. <laughs> it's okay. It's linen. Hopefully it'll iron out right. All right. Here is my next piece that I really enjoy stitching and I totally forgot it's called um, Susan, or well, Susan's, um, Susan Bates Memory Jars for the Summer. 
And the reason I really like working on it is because this is my only project that I have with my CEXC thread. And it's so silky and soft and yeah, I just love it. Um, so I like working on it. Oops, hoop came off. Oh, that's not good. It doesn't stay on very well. Okay, whatever. So I had a long piece of fabric and I finally cut it because I have um, the Christmas jars that I want to do also. And so it's blank. And when I was packing, I accidentally took the wrong fabric out because I didn't want to make it any bulky. I mean, it's not that much bulk and I should have double checked, but I did not. So I ended up taking my bag with a blank piece of fabric instead of my actual whips, my whip, which here I am. And I didn't get to work on, so I think it was the same when I last showed you, but I'm not quite sure what I said last time or what I showed. And I'll probably save the back stitch until last because I'm not too fond of that either. I wish I could just change my mind on that. So that is the summer jars. And you can get the summer jars and the Christmas jars off of her Etsy. And Susan Bates. That's where I got the PDF. And I uploaded it into Pattern Keeper. Okay. I think that is all for what I've actually worked on. Let me see. Oh, no. I did. I pulled out my daughter's Christmas gift to me, which is um, my first Bella Filipina called Fairy Iridescence. Iridescence. So that was a surprise. And um, this is on, I want to say it's uh, Lugana. Let's see. Mushroom Lugana, 28 counts. So she picked out the fabric also, and this is, I just added one thing of thread, I think. This is, yeah. So I added some up here, so not much progress. The chart is um, hard for me to read, and I'm thinking I might have to take it to um, like Staples to get it color copied because there are, the chart is actually um, colored, kind of. It kind of gives me the dimension vibes as far as how they used to um, color their charts. A little hard to read for me. Or I'll just use the chart that I came with, probably. All right, so now everything else is going to be my whip that's in my actual um, will whip. and what I did when I went through all my stuff I found one of these and I wrote down every single whip that I have and I do let's see so so far I have 35 whips and then I, because I ended up buying a repeat pattern, I also went through my patterns and wrote down what I've had. So I can reference that in the future and not rebuy it. So hopefully that will work. I did not keep up on my book of days. Um, yeah. I don't know. No excuse. It's just not for me. So in no particular order, I'll show you what I have and what's going to be in my rotation. So my will will be my rotation. Um, this is Red Riding Hood. Um, I don't have a picture of this, do I? I don't even know. It was a, a stitch along by... Um, goodness, what is it? Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, 
and it's called Little Red Riding Hood Parade. And right now I just have part one in the red chart. And yeah, I don't know if I even downloaded the rest of the parts. So we'll see. I probably need to check that. So next time this one comes up, I will um, check to see if I have all the parts. I hope I do. Let me see if I can find a picture for you. Little red writing. Well, it looks like I have five parts, but I don't know if I have. I guess I could look on the internet. Little red writing frosted pumpkin. So you can get this online, but essentially that's what that one will look at look like. And I think I started in the middle with the um, the little window of the house. That is on a 28 count linen that came with it. Okay, what's this? Oh. This one is my Quaker. Is it a Quaker? I don't know. I think so. They look like Quakers to me. Um, my Proverbs 31 sampler. And I don't have a picture for this one because I just have two pieces of paper on the color chart. It's by leisureartslibrary.com. And I think I just bought it online. But it's at the top it says, A Virtuous Woman, Proverbs 31. Let me see if I can find that online. It is hot. I need to turn the fan on. Leisure. Arts, Proverbs, 31. Okay, I could see it on eBay. Oh, here's a good one. So, that one will look like this. And I converted all uh, the people to darker skin. Um, I don't even think there's like black Amish people, are there? Huh. Huh, I don't know. They're all in here though. Okay. That one's pretty old whip. I should just knock it out all right my next one i didn't even start because it's going to be a restart which is the fall on the farm but it's in here for me to restart it on 25 count because I, I did do it before on 28 count two over two and i did not want to do that so i have all the thread for that one and it will just only be one thread and I'll show you what it looks like but I'll probably start that um, in August since I kind of consider August like fall for me I don't know I don't really go by the solstice go by the months and what I feel so I really like these little ones but they all will be on one piece and I'm doing it on 25 count so it will be even cuter it's 25 count is smaller than 40 count thread well, um two over one or one one thread over two there you go sorry 
All right, I haven't touched this one in a minute, but it is another full coverage. It's the Chocolate Shop by Amy Stewart, and I've only done this amount. I kind of need to get back to it. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. I don't really have a plan. I think I was trying to just do cross country. Um, got kind of thick in the back, and I don't like how that part looks. But yeah. So that one looks like. I'm at 0.75% on that one. Barely work on it. And what did I say it was by Amy Stewart? It's on 25 count, and that's what that one will look like. Which kind of reminds me of the door, like this scene is in the door and the steps, and the cat is in the Grand Library romance section. That's pretty cool. And that's how big this one is, 25 count. It's my favorite. Although I don't, I wouldn't mind trying um, a, like maybe a mini full coverage in like a different count, like 22 count or even 20 count. You gotta experiment, right? I hope you can hear me. I'm in my living room by myself people are taking naps it's sunday we got back from church and then we have evening service so we'll go back and i know people some people may be working on their um what is it called this weekend is the 24 hours of cross stitch and i'm just not going to be able to ever do that i don't know how i can because basically every friday we have um get together with friends and um, yeah then church and then Saturday usually like for the past couple of months we've been going to the pool and taking the kids to the pool okay my next whip is Marabilia and her name is Mids a Midsummer Night's Fairy this one is as much, I think it's as old as my um, Queen Mermaid. So about 20 years old. Another 20 year old whip. I get old. But I think I converted her color. But yeah. I need to finish this one. But I, I'm going to have to force myself to. So I didn't really enjoy the beating. But it's in my wet pile now. In rotation. Right. Oh, here's another one. So this one is called... I just like fairies. It's a dimension kit. After getting rid of all my dimension kits before, previously... I bought, I've been starting to buy more dimension kits because I don't know. I don't want to say I can't do something. I mean, they're pretty intense charts, like the colors, but I think they've gotten better because the older charts that I had, they would have the same symbol, like a triangle, but it'll be red, blue, green, and I like to make working copies and a working copy for me would be in black because I have a black laser printer and you can't tell the color obviously so I, it would take me some work to get out of my house going to a place that has color copies to take it most likely I will forget um, but this one is dimensions gold collection spring fairy and I started this, did I start this in the beginning of the year? Let me see. I didn't even search the fabric. Hmm. I did end up getting the PDF, 
copy so I can use it in, um, what is it, Markup RXP? I don't think I put it in that one because I have it. I got it before they started charging every month. Um, but, and I'm, I'm not sure how to use it. So I think I just put it in um, Notes app. One of those apps where I can just mark it off. But this is where I started on the top left corner. So that's what I've done. Where is that? Oh, is that? It's a little up here. Over here. Long ways to go. I did um, end up putting all my flosses. I had um, so I have so many of these bobbins, paper bobbins, and um, I punched a hole in it to thread it like floss drops. And I put the symbol and if it's a full cross because they use half cross, full cross how many threads so that symbol requires one thread at full cross that one's two this this symbol right here is four threads at half cross so i did all that for all the symbols for this one so i don't know if it's easy dimension kits are just its own little love, its own level, right? I'm gonna have to put that one back later because I kind of forced it into the project bag. All right, here is um, one that I have completed before. And I told y'all before that um, now it is hanging in my mother-in-law's house. So I wanted to make one for myself. And I do have her companion piece, which maybe I should have started that one first, but um, I just wanted to start because I still had beads and and um, um, this like particular thread from my last one, this Karen collection water lily that goes with it. And I, I think I still have like suede pieces, so I ended up just purchasing or trying to find more of the beads that goes with it so I can redo it. And I haven't touched it since the last time you've seen it. Did I write down? I did not write down when I started it. But that's her face. I started in the middle and I think that's her knee and then I just worked all the way up to her face. And this is some raw linen, 28 count. I don't remember not liking, not, not liking to be 20 years ago. Huh? You change, right? People change. Um, what else can I show you next? So, I love the Hawk Run Hollow series and trying to collect all the charts each time I order. This one is at Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow and my first 40 count piece because I want it to fit in one which help me because I'm going to change it to 25 count every time I think about working on it because it'll be smaller than this just a little bit but I don't know so Um, yep. I guess I'll know next time I work on that one. I have the Autumn Quaker. Haven't worked on that much from the last time you've seen it, which I need to because it's pretty patterned. I still haven't made my mind completely um, or forged an opinion on the thread if I like it or not. Um, but they're the, oh, what 
what they're called, Valdani threads. And it's three strands. So, a lot of color changing. A lot of color changing means a slower process, but I enjoy it. I like color. That's Autumn Quaker. Let me check the rest of it. I got a couple more. And I had started, I got all of the seasons because I am a complete test as far as collecting the seasons. But here's the Winter Quaker. Started that this year and that's hasn't changed from the last time you've seen it. And this is on, um, what is this thread? This one's not bad. Some of them make my eyes cross. Looking at the glitter opalescence, I think that's what they call it. And I also got the thread for that one. So I, I did end up getting all, they're all kitted up, but I've only started on the winter and the autumn. All right. I'm so excited to tell you our an update, but almost there. All right, my next one is my only soda, soda stitch one, and it's the Cream Lady, and this is what I haven't made any progress since last time. Um, do I have a picture of her? Let's see. I try to put all my photos into an album um, for a cross stitch, so I don't know if Oh no. My husband is on the phone. Do you hear him? <laughs> anyway, um she's the Korean lady. I wanted to do it for my mother in law. She's Korean. Um by Soda Stitch and I got it on Etsy. I wonder, is that her name, the Korean lady? <laughs> oh, here it is. So that's what she'll look like. It's a little blurry, but a lady in Korean traditional dress, Hanbok. So I wanted to make that one for my mother-in-law and gift that to her one day. I need to work on it. That's why it's in this pile. Because I am determined to finish something one day. Well, I did finish the mermaid. I'm glad for that. Okay, this one is a chocolate. Um, not chocolate. This is a sweet shop by Amy Stewart. Oh, I can't see it. 25 count. I have put my threads on these um, plastic thingies. I don't think I like them. I like the paper ones and it's just too much to keep up, but looks raggedy. I don't know why I have this bobbing in there, but okay. I will show you a picture of that. Haven't worked on that in a minute, but it is on my wheel. So I'm, I'm excited about the wheel because it's gonna help me get put maybe at least a thread. I don't really have, if I have anything more, a goal of anything more to be put on, but there you go. That's what that one will look like, and it's a mini. It's my only mini that I'm working on at this moment. My grand library is a regular size, regular colors, and then um, I did complete all of, did I complete my little book? Um, this one is my super size max color stitching shelf. Oh, that's like, so I could tell by what the corner looks like. Yep. So that one is, and I did finish all of black on that. And I didn't want to get back to this because I think I'm going to focus on this one section. That was actually released um, 
as a freebie and it was the ladies I think they called it the stitching retreat so I kind of want to jump to that one and complete that so I'm sure you know what the stitching shelf looks like but I'll show you nope. so on that one I am at 4.46 percent complete and it looks like this. And the one that I want to work on is the bottom one right here. Oop. Right there. All right. And let's see, I have one Chatelaine, although I do have many Chatelaines I started, but they. Okay, well, my Chatelaines, I have to purchase the PDF. And I have yet to do that. But I'm going to start with the one that my husband gifted me a couple years back. Um, and this one is the Desert Night Tent Mandala. Oh, do I have a picture of that? Yeah, I do. It, this was what it would look like. And I got all the materials for that. It took a while, but... It finally come. So Night Desert Tent Mandala. So I want to try to complete that one first before I go to the next one. Which one is this? I put this one in here, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. This one is the Animal Kingdom. 25 count, one over one full across. And that's what I've gotten completed. I started this um, May 17th of 2022. And I don't think I have picked it up in a long time. Because, I don't know. I have other ones that I want to work on. I put it in here, though, to figure out what I want to do with it. And... My last one is the Frosted Pumpkin Under the Sea Club. My Frosted Pumpkin, Frosted Pumpkin what? Why do I keep forgetting the name? Stitchery? Stitches? Mm, I don't have it on there. Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, sorry. Um, didn't get very far on this one, but, oh, that's the back. Is it this way? Yeah, it is. This way. I think that's the top of the, one of the scuba girls. Yep. And that one is in my only project bag that I own, besides the Amazon ones that I can, I just have a lot of these. All right, so that is it for my whips. Um, there, are, I'll probably add more whips to it, but um, yeah, you'll see it in my updates. So I'm gonna spend a wheel whenever I feel like it. Um, sometimes I know what I wanna work on it's mostly the Grand Library, God Shed His Grace on Thee, and um, the 40 Count uh, Summer Quaker by Leela Rose. And I have her spring one. I'm thinking about her Halloween one. Anyways, but um, so my updates. My daughter, our daughter got married. My second oldest 20-year-old daughter got married. Um, this past week, we just got back. We spent uh, about five days in Ohio. Very humid, a lot of trees, a lot of grass. Um, I live in the high desert, so we're surrounded by mountains, openness, and um, it's dry heat, so very different for us. But it was a beautiful wedding that um, her and her mother-in-law worked on. Obviously, I, I can only do so much here. We found her dress here, but um, she moved up there a couple of months before they got married. Um, so that was beautiful. My husband shed some tears when he saw her. He said he never seen her that beautiful ever. 
and uh, that made me cry too, but that was nice. And all my daughters were there. <laughs> None of the, the parents could make it, but our good friends, um, they were basically her shoe and grandparents from our church came and attended and helped. Um, grateful for their company, it was, it was a good time. And uh, yeah, so now she's a missus and they went on their honeymoon, I think they just got back today. Um, so that was fun and uh, everything that she hoped for. And I didn't have a wedding, I just went, me and my husband just went to the courthouse. So this is like her first wedding in my family that I have ever attended and been a part of. So that was nice. Um, so another, let's see what else has happened. I have some good news. We have put a deposit down on a puppy and uh, we get to pick him out um, in two days and then bring him home two weeks after that. So he's only five weeks old. And let me see, I have a picture of the puppy, the litter. So they're, they're about three hours away from us. So I'm so excited. His name is going to be Rocket and he's so cute. Um, we get the second pick of the litter and we wanted it all black male. So the mom is all black. No, yeah, the mom is all black and the dad is all white. So some of them in Schnauzer like colors is called um, silver, which is like kind of like, um, I don't know, they kind of remind me of like Doberman Pinscher type of coloring. But here's a picture of that one. And we're either getting him or his brother that looks like him. But they're miniature schnauzers. And yep, you're gonna be my little baby. Can't wait. Um I just feel it feels empty in this house without something furry crawl like rolling around here and walking. Um definitely still miss my dog and I didn't know I was gonna miss her this much, but um, yeah, I mean, she's been with us for 14 years, so yeah, that's kind of um, not an easy thing to get used to not having, right? Um, other than that, for updates, I'm getting ready to um, get all in, like order our books and plan for the new year. Um, I have three daughters left at home, so one of them it's her senior year so we ordered her senior curriculum um she wanted to do a different one than her, what her sister's done previously and um then i need a plan for my seventh grader and my fifth grader so yeah um let me know if you have any questions i hope i covered everything usually like when i get off here i'm like oh man i forgot to say that but yeah thank you for being here um, listening to me and looking at my projects and like if you have any questions if i forgot anything just let me know i hope you can hear me i am i record off my um laptop and oh i wanted to say um there's a lot of new youtubers and i don't know how, how some of you may feel as far as the ads popping up we don't have control of that. That's all YouTube. I don't put ads in there. I don't, I'm not monetized. It wouldn't benefit me. And if I was monetized, I, I think we have the control of not putting ads. I'm not sure about that, but yeah, it's, we're in YouTube's mercy. So, um, I am not in control of the ads. Any of the new YouTubers are not in control of the ads. I know it's annoying, um, especially when you're watching and it just pops up, right? Um, I, I don't know. It's commercial. I'm, I grew up where we were kind of forced to watch commercials. Um, but, I mean, I don't like it either, but I know that they're not in control of it because I'm also creating YouTube videos. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, it's annoying, but it it's we're not in control of it. So, mm. Um, but I do, I do appreciate each and every one of you that follows and leave comments and likes and, um, 
yeah and if you still want me to cook common yeah let uh, i don't even know what i was going with that but i like i like telling you about my projects i love interacting with you i try to um write to everybody's comment this one's gonna be a little bit longer which is nice i told my kids don't come out and i think my husband did try to come out but i need to get off of here so they can live in this house my uh craft room is a mess i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but my husband is working on um our homeschool slash um what do you call oh loss of words well, for people who come over, we're going to put like a sleeper sofa in there too. But he's working on big bookshelves. So hopefully one day I can get back in there um, once we put all our books in and film in there so they can roam freely in our house, right? <laughs> all right. Thanks for coming and I'll talk to you later. Happy stitching. Bye.